So we have a number of packets captured here from our browsing to our simple website. Uh, we note that if we browse through, there's some HTTP messages, some TCP messages, and ARP. Uh, let's hide the ARP for now. Uh, not ARP is one filter, so show everything that is not an ARP message. The not is the exclamation mark. Uh, we'll get rid of some of the others in a moment. Firstly, note that HTTP is an application layer protocol and it uses TCP as the transport protocol. Therefore, uh, before we can actually send a HTTP message, we need to establish a TCP connection from client to server. So the first three frames in this capture, from client to server, then the response, and then client back to server, one, two, three, are the TCP three-way handshake. Send a SYN message to, to server. The server responds with an act of that SYN and a SYN of its own. And then the client acknowledges the SYN from the server. SYN, SYN, ACK, ACK is a T TCP three-way handshake. Then we can send data, which is this fourth frame from client to server. We will look at the contents of that in a moment. It's a HTTP message. Uh, note that the next frame does not contain any data, it's a TCP segment, and the ACK flag is set. Really, the purpose of this segment five is to acknowledge the data in the previous segment. And we'll see that uh, come through, and we see the uh, TCP connection being closed with the fins uh, later. And then when we access page one, Another HTTP request for page one. Before that, there's another connection set up. So this is at time 38. Sin, sin, ack, ack. Download the page, some acts, get the response, close the connection. At time 61, establish another connection. In some browsing situations, you may see the single connection and multiple pages accessed. But in this case, using links, we create a connection, access a page, close the connection. To access the next web page, we create a new TCP connection and so on. The purpose here isn't to study the TCP connection. We want to just look at the HTTP exchange. So I'm going to change the filter and let's just show HTTP messages. That simplifies everything. Remember, 192.168.1.11 is the client. 2.21 is the server, the web server in this case. And the basics of HTTP is that the client sends a request for a web page. And assuming the server has that page requested, the server sends back a response, including the content of that web page. And when the client gets that response, it displays the content on the screen. In our case, we saw it displayed in the Lynx web browser. Now, there are other scenarios that can occur, different types of requests, uh, different types of responses. In this simple scenario, we'll just see a single type of request and response. So the first two messages belong to one exchange with HTTP, a request and a response. Let's look at the request in detail. We expand so it's from client to server. The summary info says that the client wants to get, so that's the type of request, a file identified by a forward slash and using the protocol HTTP version 1.0. But there's more information in the request. So if we expand the HTTP message, that's actually the first line of the request. With HTTP, we send messages in a text format, basically the fields in a header uh, on a separate lines. So this is the first line saying get the file slash using HTTP version 1.0. But there's some fields included and we see the name of the field, the colon by the, and followed by the field value. For example, one field is the host field, which gives the IP address of or, or the, the name of the server that we're accessing. In this case, it's the IP address of node 3. These accept fields are indicating some preferences 
what the browser wants to accept in response, the type of response they prefer, the type of encoding they may accept, whether it can be zipped, maybe the web page is sent back zipped, and the type of language they prefer to get. Note that they're preferences. The web server may not have uh, the content in that format, so it may still send it in a different format. The user agent field is a string that indicates the web browser that's making the request. In this case, it says that the web browser is called Lynx version 2.8.9 dev.8 and it's using some library and some SSL or some secure libraries as well. So some details about the web browser, formerly called the user agent. And that's about all of the request in this case. So it sends a request for what file? Well, the slash file. Why? Because when I opened links, the command I used, I type in the protocol to use, HTTP, the address of the server, 192.168.2.21, and the file I requested is simply that single slash, that forward slash. I didn't type in a name like index.html, I just typed slash. So. Now, in most cases for web servers, the web server will interpret a request for the forward slash as if a page exists called index.html, it will return index.html. There are other uh, variations that could be index.htm, index.php. It depends upon the configuration of the web server. But it's typical that if you request a directory, like a forward slash, then it server returns the file index.html, which is in that directory. There are other cases as well. Let's have a look what was returned by the server in frame number six here. The summary information is that the response was using protocol HTTP version 1.1. Even though the client is using 1.0, there's some compatibility with the different versions. So the server is using 1.1. And the 200 OK, the 200 is the response code and the OK is a response message. So they go together and 200 OK means your request was OK, I have the page, here it is. You may have seen other responses when you go into more advanced uh, scenarios. One you know of is probably 404, not found. The response you get when you act, try to access a web page that doesn't exist on the server. There are many other types as well. So let's look at the response in depth. The first line is this 200 OK. Then we have some fields coming from the server back to the client, the date of the response, something that identifies the server, when this page was last changed. Uh, a few other fields like the content length, length, how it was encoded. In this case, the content, which is the web page, was compressed using gzip. And the type is HTML. If we keep going down, then the actual content is included, the data, which is the web page. This may be easier to see here. The content called line-based text data, but the web page in, in this case is the HTML. Doc type, HTML, it's hard to read here, head, title, simple demo. If I just jump to node three, and we go into the directory var www.html and we look at index.html using less you see that is the web page so that the html content of this file was sent back in the response it was actually zipped but wireshark doesn't show it zipped it decompresses for us so we can see the actual content the web page is 420 bytes, but compressed it was down to 270 bytes. When the browser receives this and decompresses, it uses the HTML to display 
the page, you know, whether it's color coding or the, the appropriate fonts and so on. In links, there's not many options to change fonts, but you can change colors. And it, the web browser displays the links. There was a link to page one, for example. So that's the basics of a HTTP exchange. Uh, we request a page and it, if all goes well, comes back in the response. 38 seconds later, we clicked on the link to request page one. Page one came back in the response. Then a bit later, requested index.html because we clicked on a link to index.html and the response came back. Note that really requesting slash versus requesting slash index.html for this web server, they are the same. We get the same page back. We requested page two, we got it back. We requested page three, which is in a subdirectory called subdir, and we got it back. So we can see the basics of HTTP uh, from capturing uh, the packets being our, between our browser using links and our simple website, which was created uh, with a script.